If you're a 90s kid or older, you know the brand Kodak for their cameras and their photos. And as the technology progressed really year after year, Kodak didn't really keep up with the times, leading them to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2012, which was ultimately the end of the business. But over the last five trading days, Kodak stock, ticker symbol KODK, is up over 1500%, going from around $2 per share to over $30 per share. The company now sits at a market cap of over $1.4 billion, adding hundreds of millions of dollars in a matter of a few trading sessions. So what's going on with Kodak stock here? Has something really changed in the business to garner all of this hype and is all of it justified? That's what I want to really discuss in this video today. I want to share some thoughts, kind of my personal thoughts here on Kodak and what has happened with them and what this means for them going forward. So guys, if you appreciate these kind of impromptu videos where I cover, uh, you know, topics that are relevant here today, smash that like button down below to show your support because these kind of videos only gain traction for maybe a few days, but they do still take a lot of time and research to produce. So I really would appreciate your support. So why is Kodak stock soaring the last few days here? It's been a whole slew of good press news the last few days for Kodak, with an announcement from the president to the CEO appearing on media outlets. The hype train is real here, and in fact, in the last 24 hours, Kodak stock was the most popular stock by far on Robinhood, with over 43,000 investors buying up the stock in hopes to come out with some gains on this hype. Nothing wrong with that, and as a momentum play, I'm sure a lot of people are going to make a ton of money on this, and if that's you, congratulations on that play. But let's be real here, what I see happening in the stock reminds me and smells of some other things that we've seen recently recently, you know, Genius Stock, Hertz Stock, and some other companies, all these companies that have recently seen some massive hype and volatility, only to come crashing down once reality sets in. Regardless though, investors I know are going to continue gambling on these kind of stocks. Hopefully you're doing it responsibly and hopefully you're doing it with a very tiny sliver of your portfolio where you're fine losing that entire investment. But if you're going all in on this investment, don't know what to say, just wish you all the best. And hey, as long as this keeps happening, I'm gonna keep producing videos on this because I know it's content you guys enjoy watching. Anyways, as I was saying, all this optimism has really stemmed from an announcement from the US president. So Trump actually states here that he wants to tap the former film giant to make drug ingredients. You're probably thinking, how, what, why, how could an old age tech company be a medical pharma company? Does that even make any sense? And apparently their CEO tries to justify this, but first, let's look at the terms of the deal here from the US government. According to news sources, the US government awarded Kodak a $765 million loan to start producing drug ingredients under the Defense Protection Act. This is the first move of its kind here, but isn't the first time they're invoking this act. In fact, guys, this is the 33rd use of the Defense Protection Act, and the goal is to help mobilize Kodak to make generic, active pharmaceutical ingredients with an indirect goal of bringing back jobs again to America and to the business. And the end goal, of course, is to make America the world's premier medical manufacturer and supplier. Kodak has also issued a response here to this saying it will produce pharmaceutical components that have been identified as essential but have lapsed into chronic national shortage as defined by the Food and Drug Administration. So what it looks like to me is that the government here said, hey, we have some of this money, we want manufacturing for these pharmaceuticals to be local once again, we don't want to rely on external countries after everything has happened in the last few months, so we're going to look out there for a company that deserves this money and apparently Kodak was was that company. It's kind of crazy to think because after the thousands of companies out there and the hundreds of companies in the pharmaceutical space today already with all this kind of figured out and them producing other sorts of drugs and medical equipment and all that kind of stuff, they chose to go with an old age tech company, which does leave me scratching my head a little bit here. So of course, guys, I was a little bit skeptical here when I saw this announcement. I thought it can't be the same Kodak that I remember from when I was a child. It must be some other Kodak company that just has the same name, but no, it's still the same camera company. But after reading through some of their history, it appears that Kodak actually does have a history, a brief one of being in the pharma space. Back in the 1990s, Kodak was involved in production of non-prescription medicines 
like aspirin, for example, and they ended up selling this business to the healthcare giant Smith Klein Bigham for $2.925 billion in 1994. So this was a nice, sizable win here for them at the time. Unfortunately though, even with this deal, the company couldn't remain afloat as they filed for bankruptcy protection just two decades later. Now, of course, Kodak is loving this media attention, and of course, the loan from the government here is going to be a huge boost for the company financially. And in a statement here, they say that they are proud to be a part of strengthening America's self-sufficiency in producing the key pharmaceutical ingredients we need to keep our citizens safe. They plan to do this by leveraging their vast infrastructure, deep expertise in chemical manufacturing, and heritage of innovation and quality. And the company will play a critical role in the return of a reliable American pharmaceutical supply chain. Also, they stated that Kodak will expand existing facilities in Rochester, New York and St. Paul, Minnesota under the new Kodak Pharmaceuticals arm. Now, I was digging through YouTube and I found this interview that the executive chairman did on CNBC this morning and I'll leave a link in the description down below if you want to listen to it. But what I did do was grab a few bits of information here from this interview to summarize it for you guys. First, this is not a done deal yet. Kodak does feel confident, of course they're going to say this, why wouldn't they, that this loan will will close without an issue, but there is still some due diligence the government needs to do to approve this and fund it to Kodak. So there is still some risk on this front because if for whatever reason this falls through, that share price will be back to around $2 per share in a hurry. Now they do mention that they've been working on this deal for a few months, so presumably it's going to pass through, but it's something to be aware of if you're buying into this stock here today. Now, in regards to the $765 million loan, it is a loan, it's not a grant, and it will need to get paid back in 25 years, which is standard for corporate loans generally. Then, of course, came the question about profitability. The executive chairman was asked if this deal would be profitable for Kodak, and he stated that yes, it would would be. The reason that he gave was because they are repurposing 40% of their buildings that they have, so there's no cost for new construction for this new arm of the business. But in the interview, this is all he really touches upon. He just keeps saying they have the infrastructure, they have the infrastructure, there's no need for new investments for all of this, but he doesn't really go much further into how they're going to make money and what their path to profitability is, and I'm guessing it's because they don't really know that right now at this time. They're just enjoying this loan, they're just enjoying the media attention, and they're just enjoying their stock price being boosted significantly from all of this positive news right now. So what do I think of this uh, whole deal and investment and Kodak and all that stuff? Well, to me, it seems like an incredible opportunity here for Kodak the business. They're getting money from the government. It's a loan that they can pretty much sit on for 25 years and it kind of gives the company new life. They can actually go and restart the business, you know, actually come out successful this time potentially and maybe it's a good thing at the end of the day for this business. But from an investment perspective, something smells fishy. This doesn't seem like a very good investment to me. If you were someone that's saying, hey, I want to get some exposure to the pharmaceutical space, pharma companies, healthcare companies are the future, why would you go with a company like Kodak who still has to kind of prove this out? Why wouldn't you go with one of the massive giants out there, you know, Johnson & Johnson, Amgen, all these other companies that have proven themselves over time, that have manufacturing in place already, that have pharmaceutical products already in production, why wouldn't you just consider putting your money in there? Because a lot of those companies are actually trading at some fairly attractive valuations here today. Now I do know that a lot of you watching are probably thinking, Nick, this is just a speculative investment, this is not a long-term investment. I don't care what the business fundamentals are. I, I don't care if this business has a future. I don't care about all that stuff. I just want to put my money in and in a week or a few days or whatever it is, double my money and then sell and then, you know, move on from the stock. If that's your plan, I wish you all the best. There's probably a lot of money to be made here, both to the upside and downside here because of the crazy volatility we're seeing. But the fear is I've seen this time and time again and I know a lot of investors are gonna get sucked in and they're gonna get left bag holding this stock. My feeling, guys, just my opinion, is that we're pretty close to the peak here for this optimism. I don't really see how it's gonna get a lot better unless they announce another billion dollar deal or you know they announce that they're working with one of the other major pharmaceutical companies 
something like that. But it really would need to be something major for us to push the stock price and valuation even higher. That's why I do have a bit of concern here buying it at these prices, even if it's for a speculative play. I feel that if you haven't bought in right now, you may have already missed the boat. But hey, I could be completely wrong. The stock price could maybe see another 1,000, 1,500% gain in the next few days. And if that's the case, again, I wish you all the best. This is an extremely high risk play. You should go in here thinking, I'm throwing this money in, I may not see this money ever again, but I'm completely fine with that. And if that's not your response, then it's probably not a good investment here for you, even if it's a speculative play. Just manage your position smartly. I wouldn't go all in on the stock, and if I was playing this, I'd put in like, you know, less than half a percent of my portfolio in this, even that may be too much. But regardless, I would not put a lot of money into this because it's high risk, high speculative and a high chance of actually losing your money. Either way guys, let me know what you think about this company and this deal here in the comment section down below. Love to hear your thoughts and I hope you enjoyed this impromptu video. And if you did, of course, smash that like button down below. Either way guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to invest positively and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.